Crikey, uh, shucks. I cannot believe uh, I'm actually standing in front of all of you today. You know, it's just it's been a long, long journey, guys. You know, I, I was born in Zimbabwe in 1983, and my mom was actually uh, in the queue for execution to be, you know, executed and put in a mass grave. And she was about to give birth to me, and my dad had to escape and go to South Africa and run away from all this trouble. So, you know, my life really started off on a very tr drastic uh, beginning, you know, with all the ethnic cleansing that was actually going on in the beginning. And a lot has happened ever since then. And eventually it led to me, you know, growing out of all this with my mom and my dad being far away and eventually leading us to, you know, come together as a family. You know, separation has really been uh, caused by all the bad things happening in my country, Zimbabwe, which I'm sure a lot of you know about. My presentation today is really going to be about lines in motion, which is going to be a, in really uh, looking at the, the, the integral part of being a designer, you know, uh, coming from a, an extremely poverty-stricken uh, background to come to America. I'm actually, you know, I came here as a refugee, and um, I came here in 2006. So the journey begins with just um, growing up in Bulawayo, which is, you know, I'm Zulu, by the way, and thanks to Nika, I'm, uh, Niga, I'm very, uh, Happy about that. That's pretty awesome. I was very happy when I just realized that. So that's pretty awesome. But uh, you know, my talk today is really going to focus on that. As you can see in this picture, you're looking at a picture that talks about my history. You know, Ndebele is where my mom is also a part of, like the Bushmen and Ndebele tribe as well, two tribes, but she's part of, you know, of both. And creativity is a huge part of our culture. You know, we really create, we find a sense of will, a sense of living, a sense of, um, of well-being with creativity. And so, going back to my history, I really started out drawing at the age of three. And drawing really uh, gives me a sense of freedom to explore, to shape ideas from completely nothing. Also, for sometimes from completely the things that I see around me. And as you can see, I'm standing right on top of, of vehicles. Like I said, Datsun. Uh, there's not too many of those out here, maybe one or two, which I see on the road on the highway. But um, yeah, that's our first home. That house is about maybe 800 square feet. That, that's the kind of home I grew up in. That's where I actually began, in, in uh, Guablao in Zimbabwe. And, you know, growing up, as I said before, was a very, very difficult beginning. It was always difficult, always, because I struggled in school. You know, I was last in my class. You know, a, a lot of things I really struggled with learning because with learning, you know, you, you approach things differently. So I always knew inside, I thought maybe I had ADD or something. No, 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 it wasn't. It wasn't at all as you'll discover with the journey as I keep going forward, right? So, um, you know, a lot of what I do with uh, you know, drawing, it's really just to really find a sense of connection with the things around me, with people, with objects. And, um, and one of the things which I discovered with, going, uh, with my journey coming from Cape Town, uh, sorry, from, from Lawayo, then on to getting an opportunity to go to University of Cape Town, which I don't know how I got there because my principal one time told me, Dr. Zani, you're not going to amount to anything because all you do is just draw. Yes, I would occasionally do well in math sometimes, but it was really just that whole uh, reality, the shock, that crikey, mate, you are not doing so well in school. Are you really going to take this on and go on with your life and do something with it? And in my, in my heart, I was like, no, you know what? Because I come from a family where we believe in God and we have faith. So it keeps me going absolutely every single day. And my mom, you know, she's my hero. You know, she survived it a lot, but... What she taught me is patience, forgiveness, and really appreciate absolutely every fabric, every element of whatever you experience in life. And trust me, it has really taken me very far to really see things that way. And with that whole journey said, you know, I really got an opportunity to go to, to Cape Town, and my principal was like, crikey, mate, you made it. And you know, I actually got to finish University of Cape Town, then I actually went back to him and told him that, well, I did amount to something. He told me I wouldn't, but I did. Okay? <laughs> and he just like st stared at me like, okay, so you made it, huh? Okay. So it was just like, you know, the reality shock for him. Like, you know, you're supposed to be the stewardship for education. Don't tell me I can't do anything because I can do absolutely anything. So then I got the opportunity to go to Cape Town. You know, I did architecture there and I did everything there, my graduate studies. But of course, my parents could not afford for me to go there after my scholarship ran out. So I had to figure out an opportunity like, okay, where in the world can I go with the, with the globe spinning? And America, what was it? And I got an opportunity with the door-to-door -door sales company where I actually was able to come to America, 
and do door to door. And I backpacked across America and sold books door to door to a couple of thousand people, like, you know, door to door. I loved it. But I was so scared of talking to people. I don't know how I'm doing this right now, but I'm actually, I guess I am, right? <laughs> so it, the journey continued. I really uh, found the sense, I found myself in the process because if you cannot find yourself in books, you cannot find yourself in money. Money does not make absolutely any difference in anyone's life. Trust me, you can have all the money in the world. It's not going to make you a better person. But what makes you a better person is the choices you make, loving your family and being there for them. You know, because trust me, if you don't do any of those things, the money you have means nothing to you, trust me. But the, the other most important thing about the journey is that as I completely kept on, you know, like in motion, drawing through my education in school, I was also drawing cars at the age of three, you know, so it was a world of architecture and car design together. Those kind of like, you know, came together. And as they came together, you know, I came to America and I got this opportunity and the world opened up to me, you know. Back home, you know, I couldn't do any of those things. You know, Mugabe was destroying my people and he still is making my people suffer right now, which hurts my heart so much. But I didn't really care about that guy. I'm going to go back one day and fix that, one step at a time or one sketch at a time. So it begins with just an imagination, right? Imagination can, can shape things. So I really started to work with, I got an opportunity with Graham's Dunn Architecture to actually work with, do different, do different projects like with Oakley coming up with conceptual ideas and you know I just always take it from an, an approach because design is about solving problems so lines in motion as you come across a problem and an opportunity how do you really approach it you can't approach it for, from just looking at yes do your prison didn't study break it up and break it up into different concepts no you just really look at it from a completely different sense because you get frustrated with that same focal point of focusing on one thing by the time you get to the end you've lost the reality of what you're trying to get to. So this was really just to look at it from a different perspective, like from car design, I'll come up with a side view for a store. You know, it was really all just all these ideas. Then an opportunity also came up as well because my mom always told me, in life always, if a door opens, always take it. And I'll tell you guys, every single door ever since I was three years old up to today, I'm 27, I've always taken every single door and I never, ever, ever stop and not take that door because each time I took the door it opened up so much huge opportunities even standing up here today I don't know how I actually got to speak at TED because I saw TED five years ago like oh crikey I'd like to stand one day and speak at TED actually I am today crikey yeah. <laughs> you know but I'm grateful but because I'm not the one responsible only for doing this a lot of people are a lot of people that help me and, I, and I'm so grateful to all of you guys and Art Center College of Design um, gave me a scholarship to you know go into car design at the Master Design Center and I took it. And uh, so this was really about exploration and exploring ideas and they taught me to think differently outside the box again because they, 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 t they teach me how to explore an idea. This is an 11 half by 17 page where you come up with ideas uh, based off your thoughts and watching movies. But this was just like real quick. This was just my first class where I had to come up with ideas in a very like 10 minutes I had to draw all this. So I just done. Then it was all that. and. Um, Facing from architecture, as you can see, that hotel, that spiral, I think it's in Denmark or somewhere in Holland. Um, you know, I get all inspiration from all these different things. And then I came up with this idea, like, oh, crack, I'm walking by the beach in San Diego, and I'm seeing this, like, you know, you see, like, an oyster on the ground. You see, like I was saying, look at things from a different perspective. Look around you, look around you, a crack, an oyster. What can come of that? Like, oh, I can actually make a one-man or two-man vehicle based off that concept and, you know, using all the suspension, making it very sustainable in its own way, maybe using a, you know, a solar membrane of some sort. But uh, then I'll go back again and I get inspiration from other people like Daniel Simon who did the, you know, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Troy um, uh, Tron bike, you know, it was one of the people that I got to actually see his work. And it's just pretty cool because Th that the whole relative thinking gets you thinking uh, outside the box too. And this was a, an, an approach for a different solution. Okay, it was like, okay, design a vehicle, a hunting vehicle that goes across the terrain. So I thought of a cheetah. I love cheetahs. They're so quiet. They're not so dangerous. I mean, I was chased by a leopard once, but it's no big deal. But, you know, uh, cheetahs are actually much better. They're like your house cat, smaller and faster, and they go over the terrain. And they, then they take you through that. And I looked at that whole idea of the form and the lines, how that can actually inspire me. And also looking at the African dung beetle, I love those, those are pretty awesome. So what's cool about them, because you're walking in the bush in the veld, if, you, if you've gone um, you know, to the safari, I'm sure you, you, the, you, the, the tour guides told you about them. They're very tiny, but very strong. See, you get, I get inspiration for living even from those small creatures, because they, they still survive regardless of the dangers that surround them. 
trust me, you can survive through anything. This economy is actually a great, great opportunity for all of us. And, um, you know, so this was really a good inspiration for that, so I took all those uh, uh, elements of that. Then, of course, as a designer, you get a change of mind with something, so I just started to go outside the box again and do something differently. Uh, based off the lines, and of course, th there's the idea of looking at the existing ideas and uh, doing something that they are not doing at all. Ducatis don't have vans, so I decided to go for a van for Ducati, and, and then of course you start there, and you, st you start to look at all the different ideas to come up with the Ducati van, and looking at all the elements of the Ducati, which is the frame and the, the, uh, the paneling, and from that you get to see exactly how it comes together, and you come up with sort of like a van, but it's still in progression, it's not yet done. Then I kept going, like looking at an idea of a, a pivot point uh, of this van, which takes on the form of the rider as you're riding on a Ducati. It's a very prominent stance, right? So that's how the, the Ducati um, user uses it. And again, you have to step back a little bit and take a breather, go for a walk, skydive, do something pretty awesome, you know? And then come back, you're like, okay, now what am I supposed to be doing here? I have to break up the, the whole exploration process, you know, extra structure and packaging and everything. So. And, and the great thing about it, it just keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. And then I get to come up with all these ideas of packaging, because cars are about packaging, not just about the form, but how everything comes together, how it actually works within your space. If you drive your cars, you must take notice of that, because how do you go camping, how do you go to work and be able to put everything together? So I was able to really come up with all these concepts and create the Ducati van, which is what you see. And uh, these are all other drawings which I did, and just thinking outside the box, and then look, taking a different approach to that. But I've been drawing since I was three, so I love that, you know. And of course, how can that design transform the face of Africa, you know, with the World Cup, which a lot of you have experienced? Uh, you got to see a lot of amazing things happening, and, and one of the things I am doing with my friends, we're doing a clinic in Malawi called Collective Hope, because I've been blessed so much by America so much by so many people, why not just give back? You know, I can't live in a white picket fence and have a nice car, a nice house, and the two doggies, and I'm happy. No, you know, you just, you, you just, just gotta go back again and help other people, and you'll live in a happier life with whatever you already have. So I'm like, well, I'd rather give back, because I've been given so much, and you know, um, I gave it back, and I started thinking of the process of coming up with a building for a clinic in Malawi, which captures water and is mimicking one of nature's um, uh, animals, which is the butterfly, so it's able to get light into it, natural ventilation because of the, t the shape of the roof, which is the final thing that you see there. Then, you know, drawing from that, I'm able to come up with, you know, a space, a space programming, which allows you to explore the space and see what's actually happening within this. You know, this always changes because as much as I can design this, if the local people don't like this idea, they'll never really take it on. You know, it has to be something which connects with them. And, uh, you know, with all this exploration, I'm able to see all these things and uh, come together. And you know, I'd just love to leave you with you guys with a simple story my grandmother told me. She was 106 when she died in, on my birthday, 2nd of November, which was last year. And the last thing she told me is like, we, we are born, when we're born, it's like, it's like a droplet. And by the glaciers, you see a huge glacier that's coming down. That represents mom being pregnant. You know, when she's pregnant and she gives birth, you see the water spouting out below the gl glacier. That's like when you're a baby, you're learning how to walk and you're, you're walking on the ground, right? So what happens when you reach a point, you're like 10, 15 years old, you reach a little tiny waterfall, that's when you're, you're actually trying to find who you are as a young person. You, you find the pressures of mom and dad pushing you to get things done, doing your homework and everything. And as the waterfalls get bigger, you go to high school, you have to find your identity. Who are you? What am I going to do for the rest of my life? The pressure is on. Mom and dad want to see you to go to college or not. You know, you lose your ground. Then you get to your delta. In a delta, many things happen. There's little distributaries and, and derricks which lead you to, which lead to nowhere sometimes. Some lead to somewhere. And those that lead to nowhere are the people who get stuck and do drugs and they get stuck in, in a dark world and lose their life and become homeless. And it's so sad, I see so much of that happening. But at the same time, it's when you reach the very end of that destination, you know, it's the sea. We are all in the sea of life. That sea of life is where we are actually exposed to a lot of things and, and so, so many opportunities to do so much. And it's just the choices we make that really make us who we are and never, ever, ever give up in the, any dream that you have because, you know, if I can make it from Africa and coming from a poor village, you know, coming from a poor background where my mom and dad couldn't do anything for me, but the drive that one has inside is not 
is just installed by the beginning and by your surroundings, and you just have to find it, seek it out, and when you seek it out and find it, you'll make a difference in your life and the people around you, so you'll be happy. Joy comes from doing all that. So I hope you guys enjoy the talk, and you can follow up with more. And see you there.